Hey friends, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish. And today we are going to build an adventure from scratch. Uh, this show, like all of the work that I do here on Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. If you want to help support shows like this, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish and becoming a patron. Today, you're going to see a lot of the material that patrons have access to in the uh, adventure generators and uncovered secrets, two types of products that I put out that patrons have had access to and which will be in the upcoming book, The Lazy DM's Companion. Today, we're going to make heavy use of this material while I build a build an adventure for a game that I'm running on Saturday. So this is going to be really interesting. It's going to be scary because I don't have anything prepared whatsoever. And what I'm planning to do is by the end of this show, I expect to have an adventure ready to go, ready to run for my friends on Saturday and we're gonna use the adventure generators to do it. So the Lazy DM's Companion is going to have two kinds of tools in it. The Lazy DM's Companion is intended to help you more easily prepare and run your 5e D&D games. In particular, it's there to help make it easier to run and help inspire the creation of your own adventures for your own 5e games. And you're gonna see how that works today. And we're doing this live on Twitch. So what do we need to do? I am running the adventure from scratch and I set up an outline in Notion. By the way, if you want to see what the cover, that is the cover of the Lazy DMs Companion drawn by Jack Kaiser, who did the same, he did, he did covers for Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master and the Lazy DMs Workbook. So you can see it there, which I think is, is awesome. That is the cover to the Lazy DMs Companion, I think. Pretty sure, it's gonna be pretty awesome. And that's the artwork for it. So, yeah, so we're going to use, if you, so the, the material you're going to see today is available to patrons of Sly Flourish. All of it is available to patrons of Sly Flourish. It's about, I think it's on the order of about 40 pages of material, maybe more. It might be as many as 50 pages of material. Various adventure generators and guidelines to help you run your 5e games. Great stuff if I do say do so, do so say so myself. Yes, and DM Chromie says, is there a new book? There is a new book coming. The Kickstarter will be later this summer, maybe fall. The book will probably be out early next year. That's the current, we'll see, we'll see how that's going on. But if you check out the patron, SciFlourish Patreon page, you can get access to all of the material that will be going into the book early, the unedited, unlaid out version of the material. And then what we do is we take that and we run it and we clean it, and then we're gonna put it together in a book. So, Blaro says, have a good stream, I'm gonna go play D&D. If you have the opportunity to play D&D instead of watch my show, you're going to the right place. Enough procrastinating, I have an adventure. So I put together some notes about this uh, video that we're shooting here. So what's the purpose of the video? The purpose of the video is to, the purpose of this show uh, is to build an adventure and to build an adventure in particular using the adventure generators from the Patreon, which will be going in the book. And if we need them uncovered secrets in case there's some uncovered secrets that help us out as well. So we're gonna take a look at both and we wanna try it out, right? So what do we need? How do we build an adventure? So the adventure is gonna be about four hours. It's going to, we're gonna have like a fifth hour just to sort of get used to the characters, but it is a one shot. I'm expecting to be a one shot game. I do not expect it to be the beginning of a long campaign. I would probably do things differently if I was going for a long campaign. And an important consideration is what world am I running it in? Now, my intent with the adventure generators and with uh, the Lazy DM's companion is that you have a campaign world that you like and you're already playing in it. I'm not offering one and I don't really have generators for campaign settings. I expect most DMs have a campaign setting either that is published that they're using like Eberron or Dark Sun or Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk, or they have their own. I think about half of DMs when I surveyed, about half of DMs that I surveyed ran their own homebrew campaign world and we love building them. So I don't really need to do a lot. I wanna help you fill it out with awesome adventures. By one shot, I mean a single session. I mean a single session adventure. I mean a four hour game. So they, you know, needs a beginning, middle and end right off the bat. And, and that's, that's our intent. So what world do we want to set it in? I think I've already planned on a world. I was talking to my wife about it because she's going to be in the game. And I said, what do you want to play? And she's like, I really love Eberron. And I really love Eberron. So I have a feeling we're going to go with Eberron. I think, I think when we think about what world, I think the world that we're going to go to is Eberron. Uh, while these other ones sound great, Midgard would be fun too. There's a, there's, a, there's a particular area of Midgard that I like. It's the Majocracy that's sitting right on the edge of the Western Wastes is a really cool place that I dig. And it's not really well known, 
So it's kind of a fun one to play in. Of course, you could do a Forgotten Realms adventure, but everything's in the Forgotten Realms. So I don't think I really need to do that. Greyhawk, I don't think I really need to do Greyhawk either. I know people love Greyhawk. And, and as long as, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I really want to jump in there. So I think we're going to go with Eberron. I really love Eberron. It's, I, think it, I think it's my favorite published campaign setting. I really dig it. So then the question is where in Eberron, right? So what world? We're going with Eberron. But where in Eberron is it going to be? So let's jump over to, we'll go to the DMs Guild, or not DMs Guild, D, uh, D, D Beyond. Let's just take a look. I have, I have a thought already, but I kind of want to give myself a little space and maybe try an area that isn't, that isn't, that isn't particularly well known. Wiggins, let's see, Uncle Funkel says, is this gonna be on YouTube podcast yet? Or yes, it will. It will be both a podcast and a YouTube video. It'll be hopefully nice and cleaned up. I do not want to do it in Sharn because I've run the hell out of Sharn. I love Sharn. I love it to death, but I don't think I need to run it there. So then there's, if we look at chapter two, the Corvair Gazetteer, we have all of the nations. We have Ondair, uh, Breland, Sire. I'm not going to do it in the Mornland. Goon, the Demon Waste might be fun. Droam, I've done a lot with the Drom. The Eldine Reaches, some of these I'm not real, I have to, not, I have to you know, dig in. Karnath, I've run Lazar Principalities before, and that's fun. The Moor Holds are kind of interesting. You can definitely do some fun exploration with the Moor Holds. Kubara, I don't know anything about Kubara. The Shadow Marches, I don't really know about them. Talentra Plains, Thrain, Thronehold, Valinar, Zalargo. And then there's some far out places. Yeah, a place called Demon Waste grabs your attention right away. I think that might be a fun one. Arenal, Arganesson, Kyber, North and South Poles, Zarlona, and Zendrek. Antipodal says, love Zalargo. What's the deal with Zalargo? What do you dig about Zalargo? Zalargo, first glance, homeland of the gnomes. This, the desert streets or city streets are bright and clean. University libraries. Zalargo isn't a tyranny. Each major city is a democratically elected. Oh yeah, a lot of spy kind of stuff. Everyone watching everyone else. I don't think, I think the kind of adventure I want to run, when I think about what type of adventure I'm going to run, I want it to be pretty straightforward. I don't think I want to do like a lot of crazy intrigue spy stuff. So I'm not sure that this is, I think this would be fun for a, a, either like a short campaign or even a longer campaign campaign, but I'm running like a one-shot adventure and it's like, get a quest, go to a place, do a job, get a reward, right? It's going to be a real straightforward, real straightforward place. The demon wastes, I believe, is there like a frontier on the edge of the demon waste? Let's take a look. So rivers of lava, cut across volcanic glass, terrible place. It's a little dark and grim, jagged rock formations. Fiends ruled Cover. They were pushed back to the demon wastes. Uh, primordial ruins sustained by the dark magic bleak, the, the, dot the bleak landscape. That's a, that's a little bit like one thing that we didn't want to do was was necessarily be too dark and grim. Like we've played, we're playing Frost Maiden now, and that's all kind of dark and grim. And we played Descent into Avernus before that, and that was really dark and grim. So I don't really want to do much there. The Carrion Tribes and the Overlords. House Therask established a tiny port at the end of the last war. The house hopes to gain access to dragon shard deposits buried under the wastes. That sounds cool. To date, it has survived the Carrion tribes and the malefic horrors of the waste, but few believe it will last. And then there's uh, known at various times as Greenhalt, Newhalt, and Kaimar's Folly. Outpost has served as Andarian settlement, Thrain Her Hermitage, and er, Hermitage, and an outpost of House Lorandar. Fallen three times, and no one knows why. Each time, the inhabitants have vanished in a single night. Today it's known as desolate and awaits the next band of settlers. So it is empty, but Blood Crescent might be a kind of a neat place. So that's not a bad one. And the Blood Crescent at the Demon Wastes, but it, it's a little, I, you know, I, I kind of didn't want to do a grim one and that kind of sounds grim, so I'm not so sure. What else? We'll do like a quick, quick run through the, the Corvair Gazetteer here. Ondar makes cheese. This is a pretty straightforward, I think this is, yeah, a magic place. So this is like a high magic place. That's kind of cool. Right, can't go, can't go wrong here. Arcanics, a village, Fairhaven, capital of Vondar, most beautiful cities in Eberron. That's very nice. Looking in the shores of Lake Galfar, the city of Passage is the heart of dragon-marked House Orion. Resources include, yeah, so Stormhome, island city is the seat of House Lorandar. Queen Aura, Orala allows the house free reign, a government isle, finest resort and vacation spot. Doesn't sound like a lot of adventures going on here. It's a nice place to visit. Big floating citadels of wizard towers and all that kind of stuff i like i just noticed for the first time that here's a guy flying on a broom and he lost his hat his hat's flying away and he's grabbing his head because he lost his hat i've seen this picture a lot and i always thought the house was wearing a hat it gives you you know 
if you pay attention. Breland, we've run lots of things at Breland. I'm not gonna worry about Breland. The Argonath, so the Argonath had a big piece in Oracle of War, and some of the players I think might have played that. So this is Breelish, so let's see. Black Pit, a massive chasm in the Black Cap Mountains. The Black Pit is over a mile across, descends beyond the limits of sight. It's said to be the entrance of the Abyss of Kyber. Foul creatures live in the caves. Nearby village, also called Black Pit, provides a haven for deserters and criminals. No, too dark. It's kind of cool though. Sire, the Mornland, skipping that. Dargoon. So I've run a little bit about Dargoon. House Deneath, you have Dargool characters. Fortress Enclave, House Deneath serves a staging area. Goblin mercenaries who wish to work for the house provide stable and secure haven. Gorgonhorn, fortified village close to the Mornland. Nah. Uh, Lamentar, yeah, I like those Dakani ruins. But I've done, I did a lot with the Dakani in the campaign I ran. We talked about the demon wastes. Droam, so Droam is the monstrous nation, right? And I've run a lot of stuff with the Droam, so I'm probably going to skip that too. Gray Wall, gateway to the Droam, dominated by monsters ruled by the Mind Flayer. Gray Wall is both center of trade and haven for deserters and fugitives. Hmm. Probably skip things. So Eldine reaches. Fertile farmlands, druids, lots of druidic magic. Towering wood is vast and untamed. Wardens of the wood seek to perfect, pr protect travelers. This might be a cool one. Fae have a strong presence in towering wood, even outside the Fae stronghold of Twilight Dem Deminis? Demence? Manifest zones tied to Thalantis allow passage, of Thalantis allow passage between worlds. Eldine reachers are a logical origin for characters with ties to the Fae. The Gloaming, region of the Towering Woods, strong ties to the sinister plane of Mabar, charged with negative energy and undead. So this is kind of a fun Fae-ish place, I think. Greenheart, grove of the, of the archdruid Olaine. Oh, Olaine. And on the awakened Great Pine, Wardens of the Wood are based around Greenheart, but the Druid Circles of Eldin Reacher's Emissaries, so that's cool. Twilight Dem Demenes, I don't know how to pronounce that. How do you pronounce that word? Demenes. Domain. Is that how it's pronounced? Domain? Domain. Interesting. Located in the Towering Woods, House Twilight Domain has uh, close ties to the Fairy Court of Thalantis. Fae abounded the poor. So, so if we want to do a Fae adventure, Varna, largest city that reaches Gateway for Commerce, this might be a good one. So let's put Eldine Reaches as a possibility. Stick that. And did I have any other? I can't remember if there was another place that I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That Black Pit. We skipped right past that one. Uh, Black Pit is in Breland. I like that one. That's a possibility. Do, do, do. By the way, the Eberron Rising of the Last War is a fantastic book. I love this book very much. Really, really great stuff. Really just it hits all the right, right exact resolution that I want for a book like this. Lots of ways to generate adventures from it. What is this one? So I did I skip over Eldine Reaches? Yes, yeah, so that was Eldine Reaches. Karnath. Storms, long winters, grim stoic Karns are accustomed to hardship. So Karnath is the one that had like an undead thing, right? Reckham Academy is a premier military institute. Prior to the last war, all of Galifar's officers trained. Sovereign Host has regained its place as the dominant religion in Karnath, but the Blood of Vol. So if we want to do some Blood of Vol stuff, you could do that here. Blood of Vol can be fun. A tour. Now there's a city of night, stronghold of the Blood of Vol in Karnath. During the war, it was the center of production of undead. Massive catacombs. I like that. That's really cool. Fort Bones. Little undeady. Karlakton, Turbulent Sire River, separates the Deathly Mornland, the character the birds place of the kings. So maybe fun. Look at that. Fort Bones. I mean, it's real. It's totally undead, undead like. Maybe. I don't know. I'll add it to the list, but that's probably not likely. Undead stuff. Whoops, I don't need that anymore. Karnath, we have Lazar Principality. So this is if you want your, you know, sort of the salt marsh, this would be a great place to put like a salt marsh place. Fish, mercenaries, pirates. I've run a campaign in the Lazar Principalities. Dreadhold, island prison, said to be inescapable. Maintained by Hath Kandarak. Dreadhold houses infamous criminals. That could be fun. Port, regal port. I ran a campaign here. I'm afraid it'll be a little too much like a like a salt marsh campaign so probably not more holds right it had all the things about the dwarves the interesting things about the dwarves and the orcs the gatekeepers it can be a lot of fun here dwarven realm of morana hold corona peak serves as the seat of the iron council more holds capital so there's dwarven clans gold mines i guess the dwarves the one thing that about is that the dwarves are just they're just the same as dwarves as they are everywhere else it's a little it's a little kind of you know, they, they, Eberron did such a good job of sort of shaking the cliches of every other group, except dwarves, kind of. 
And then there's ancient realms below. So a dwarven, you know, a, a, a house, if you want like a traditional dwarven place, a more hold dwarven isn't so bad. More hold would actually be a good place to stick your you know, Grendel root. If you're going to run a Grendel root campaign, you could put deep delvers enclave in more in the more holds that would work actually yeah i'm thinking you know so i'm falling back to zendrek as one it's another area i'm trying to find stuff i haven't done before kubara kubara young nation at the edge of corvair untamed frontier okay i like this during the golden age of galifar a few humans bothered to cross the endworld mountains richest source of eberron dragon shards in corvair drawing waves certain ruins in kubara are connected to the age of demons i like that settlers are known house the rask has a strong presence i like house the rask they, they would actually make a really good patron for this so a dragon shard thing works really well new throne new throne the capital of new galifar is the seat of king sebastus new throne is the largest city and port in cubara myriad of people from all over blah blah blah, blah, blah. a lot of crime worm watch thriving prospecting town in worm watch is established by syrian refugees although far smaller than new sire and breland its people are proud of what they've built independent community led by i like this a veteran and evangelist of the silver flame this could, be, this could be cool. Wormwatch. So I kind of like this one. Cubara Wormwatch. That, I think, is my current most likely. Whoops. I think that's my, my most likely place to... Is it Uwanti? Is there a lot of Uwanti in there? There's Poison Dusk Lizard Folk. I don't see... I don't see anything about... I see Lizard Folk, yeah. That could be interesting. But what if there's something even worse? Especially if it's tied back to the Age of Demons. That might be fun. So I kind of dig that. I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of sitting on that one. Shadow marches, uh, Zarakash, fetid black water. Humans came to the marshes, fleeing the war. Little conflict. Shadow marches aren't a nation. No one speaks for them. House Tharask is the main point of contact with shadow marshes in the outside world. Homeland of orcs. The marshes are sca a scarred ancient conflict with a Daleker, the fiends that left the twisted creatures aberrations in the swamps. If you want a swampy place, this was not so bad. Moonlit rituals in the marches, some to honor the Daleker, others to maintain the wards that keep them trapped in Kyber. I kind of like that. Untamed shadow marches are filled with mysteries. Relics of the Daleker rest undisturbed. So if you want to do Daleker stuff, that's not bad. The marches is the birthplace of the Druidic tradition of the gatekeepers. Okay, I love the gatekeepers. Even defeat Daleker sowed seeds of madness in the marches, so you have a lot of potential for aberrants. Followers of the Cult of Dragon below. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the sites. Varak's cave. Green dragon Varak is said to have taught the secrets of druidic magic to the first gatekeepers. The Varak is long dead. Rumors say her hidden lair holds secrets tied to the draconic prophecy. I like this one too. Overland travel through Drom and the Reldon Reaches can be extremely dangerous. Most people who need to do business in March are travel by ship to the port of Zar Zarakash. Built on stilts and known for its cuisine and music, Zarakash offers rare exports of the land. This is kind of cool. House Tharask oversees the city of stilts but marcher clans and tribes. So this is, I like this place too. This is uh, Shadow Marches. That's another strong contender. The level for this, uh, good question. The, the level for this is going to be three. They're going to be third level. I think third level, like when you're running a one-shot game, I think third level is ideal. You just got to, it's, the characters are easy to pick up and easy to run, but you have a subclass. You know, I think everybody has a subclass at that point. So you have meaty hit points. It's easy to balance combat. Third level is my favorite level of fifth edition, I think. It's as a DM and as a player, I think it is it is a really strong way. So if you're doing a one shot, I'd recommend doing a third level one shot. And that's what I'm doing. So Shadow Marches could be a cool one. I dig that one. That one's probably between Cubara and Shadow Marches. Those those two are really strong. Good, good. You know, Talentra Plains, this is where the halflings are riding around on dinosaurs, right? So, dragon mark bloodlines appear throughout the tribes. Rev spirit derives from the fact that spirits haunt the plains. Region contains an unusual number of manifest zones tied to Dol and Thalantris. Uh, Thalanus. Ghosts are more likely to linger in such places. So, you could have haunted haunted ruins here, could be pretty cool. I'm sure the characters would love to ride dinosaurs. Gaetherhold, all the halfling tribes come to Gaetherhold to trade, hold councils, to settle disputes. House Thraka maintains, uh, the House Galadra maintains the town, but Gaether's hold belongs to the people not the houses other dra dragon mark houses offer their services here wandering in the caravan maintained by the members of the traveling fire providing entertainment and shelter any fortune across their path so this is a wandering place that's not bad it's a cool you know this is a cool land and, and sh you can't go wrong with uh, halflings riding dinosaurs i don't know if it's that strong though thrain i've already run a bunch of stuff in thrain it was a big piece of my other campaign so i'm going to skip thrain throne hold i think i've run did i do something with throne hold we're going to skip it valinar 
This is the last war. Dragon marked House Vil Lerenthar helped the Valinar elves build infrastructure in their kingdom. Half elves had no homeland, but House Lerenthar makes gives them yeah hopes to make Valinar haven for a people. Elves fought goblins for control of this region thousands of years ago. Relics of that struggle still scattered. Yeah, none of this is this isn't particularly grabbing me. And uh, we talked about Zalargo. So those are the Corvair places. I think we're just going to stick to that. So I think like let's let's you know let's move along. And I think that, do I want to do Cubara? So, or, or do I want to do Shadow Marches? So Cubara, let's just do a quick look back at the Cubara. This was the sort of jungly, is it jungle? Yeah, vast jungle. So we have a jungle and a swamp, Cubara or Shadow Marches. Shadow Marches sounds cooler. The name sounds cooler. I think, I think we're going to go with Shadow Marches. I think the Shadow Marches... I think the shadow marches sound cooler. They're still like looking up dragon shards. You have the house, the Rask angle, which is really cool. We have the, the you know, the, the city of Zarakesh is a good place. So I think, yeah, good time in Argonescent too. Yeah, I think some of the outworlds would be very cool too, but I think I'm gonna stick to, we're gonna stick with Corvair just for time, right? I wanted to try to move things along. So I think we're gonna do Zarakesh in the shadow marches so that is going to be they are that is the winner cool all right and these were the the other contender and other contenders i'll do that cool so i've got a place so one of the nice things about having a campaign and picking a location like that is that flavor is really important right where you set your adventure the story and the lore behind it is really important it's going to drive a lot of the things that you're going to want to prepare for the game, like your secrets and clues, like the secrets and clues, a lot of it is going to be the history of this place, but it determines where they start. It determines the kind of people that they talk to. It determines a lot of things, right? So, you, you know, you can, you can make just a generic D and D adventure with that doesn't really have any of that flavor to it. But when you take the flavor of a campaign world, and there are many good ones, you, that the, the flavor of that campaign world is a lot of the discovery of what the characters find and what the players find. And that's the story you really want to have people enjoy. So campaign worlds really are important, right? You need, you need that, you need that sort of flavor there. So now I've got Shadow Marshes, that's great. So then the next big question is what type of adventure do I wanna run, right? So four hour adventure, what kind of adventure do I wanna run? And now we're gonna jump over to the adventure generators. So currently the adventure generators is 19 page PDF available to patrons of Sly Flourish. Again, not to stick another ad right here in the middle of the show. Uh, but if you are a patron of Sly Flourish, you have access to this today, tonight. And this material is going to be cleaned up and put into my book, The Lazy DM's Companion. And what I want to do is show like how we use it, right? I got my dice, I got my, my, my dice box. I should pull that out actually, because we're going to need that. And we're going to generate an adventure using this stuff. So what kind of adventure do I want to run? And I have a choice. There's sort of the straightforward generic types of adventures that we have. The core adventure generator, right? Is what we would use. And the question is like, you have a patron, you have a quest, you have a location, Maybe you have monuments and items. You you know you have some other tables that you can use to fill things out. Potential monsters that are sticking around there. Traps and hazards and treasure. Yeah, these are like the two pages of tables you can use to sort of build a quick adventure, right? That's great if you want sort of a straightforward, simple plot line. But then we have some more kind of advanced plot lines. And you know you know even saying advanced is, is a, a bit much, right? And so one thing is like we have the city generator. We might want to use this to kind of build out that city because I don't know if there's a lot in Eberron for this. So, you know, the city generator can actually build, it's more of a settlement generator. I should probably rename this a settlement generator because small, you, it can do small towns or larger towns, right? You can do a D8 for a small town, D12 for a larger town, D20 for cities to determine this kind of stuff. So it's not just a city generator. It's a, it's a settlement generator. I'm going to put that in my to-do. There we go. So I'm going to make, you know, make my to-do, right? So we might, we might pull on this one a little bit to fill out that town if we need it. Hey, look, Encounters of the Frozen North. I wonder what that's for. Fey stuff, haunted lair. So if we wanted a haunted lair, we have that. So now we get into the types of adventures. So if, we, if you want to do a protect the village kind of adventure, right? This is your seven samurai adventure. We would use this, but I've run that a lot. And so do you have an arena focus adventure? No, I'm not going to run arena. Jaws, is there a big monster out there? And the characters are going to go hunt down a monster. I mean, you know, maybe, I don't know. You know, I could see. 
Apocalypse Now, right? Is there a traitor that went out and is now hiding out and you have to go hunt him down and kill him in a hostile land? Me? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to run that one. Dogs of War, you're in the middle of a big battle. Probably not going to run that one. Vengeance for Hire, you're very angry and you're going to go hunt down villains uh, and kill them. Aliens, there is something that some kind of weird otherworldly thing has gotten free and you have to go. Probably not going to run that. Raise the Lost Ark, you can tell they're based a lot on movie plot lines. You need to go hunt an artifact and somebody else is hunting it too, right? And where they are, where are they and what's going on there? So that's possible. The keep, there is something that is trapped and some people are trying to help it escape. How do you prevent it from getting, from escaping? So those are sort of like the big adventure generators. Yeah, Hearts of Darkness, documentary of how the DM plans the Apocalypse Now adventure. That's kind of what we're doing right now. This is Heart of Darkness. Congratulate, welcome. It was very interesting to watch that documentary. I think we're gonna try the straightforward one and and see where that goes, where a patron hires the characters to do a job in a place. So what kind of, we need a D10. So what kind of, Slurpy E has a good question that I will, I will answer in a second, but let's start off with the patron. So what kind of patron do we have here? We have a, let's see, a seven. They are a haughty, another seven, a haughty tiefling. Right, so we're gonna skip down here and we have, who is the patron? What is an interesting, so tiefling names often describe their personality and haughty, you know, calling them haughty would be pretty funny, right? And they, we're gonna say they work for House the Rask. I think it's the Rask, right? And, you know, so, so that is go, who is going to hire the characters. And we can say like, how do you know haughty? Like what is a pride? Pride, pride is a little on the nose. I, pride's actually better. I like Pride. Pride the Tiefling. You know, haughty. Haughty handler of House the Rask. <laughs> but Pride is pretty cool. I, I think I dig I dig the name Pride. So right off the bat, we've got a cool NPC, right? And we're going to stick that. If you notice, I got the eight steps here because that's what we're actually filling out. And uh, one of the NPCs will be Pride, the, Pride, Pride, right? And he's like, you know. So that, that works. What else do we need? Oh, so let's go back to the Adventure Generator. Do, so we have a patron. Uh, what kind of quest? Is the patron going to ask the characters to accomplish? And the answer is two. Kill. Hmm. Okay, maybe. All right. What kind of adventure? We could say. What we're going to do, why don't we do a separate list here and we'll have adventure, the adventure generator results. And first is who is the patron? And it's Pride, the haughty. What job? Kill someone. Maybe. Right, we can decide is 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 go in and kill somebody the kind of adventure we want to go on. I don't. Is the generator inside of your book? It will be. It is inside of the PDF for the adventure generators. Yeah, other other folks can answer the question for you. Yes, it's on Patreon right now. It will be in the book that's coming out later. I'm not sure I like kill someone for this one. I'm gonna try something else. So one thing about these random tables, the way they work, they are designed to help inspire your adventure. So you don't have to sit with what you roll. You can try to roll something else. It's good to kind of sit with an answer for a little bit and think about it and how that works. But the idea of the characters all going out and killing someone is not really the kind of adventure I really want to run. So I'm going to probably roll again. But but the idea is to inspire yourself with random with random ideas, right? Inspire your own creativity with random generators is the intent here. So Quest, let's try a different one. So 16. 16 is awaken something. Hmm, now that's, that's pretty interesting. So let's put, uh, what is the job? Kill someone or awaken something? I'll keep the other one, I'll keep the first one there because maybe it's two, right? So those, that, that's pretty interesting. And immediately you go, okay, well, we have gatekeepers here, right? There's a, definitely a story about the gatekeepers and the orcs. Maybe there's an old orc spirit that's there, right? And maybe pride wants you to go and awaken this spirit to learn how to use a gateway. Cause if they could open up this old gateway, it would be really useful. So already we have sort of a potential plot line, right? Open up a gate, open up a gateway and, and create a connection that leaves this area. Could be, could be a cool one, right? Location, where do they have to awaken this thing? We roll again, we get a 12. 12 is a castle dungeon. So is there a castle, an old castle here? So if we look back, if we go to our, if we, we decided on shadow marches, right? I don't know why this stuff is all highlighted. Let's kill those highlighting. We decided shadow marches. I don't really know if there's a lot of castles. Orcs, the marches are scarred ancient conflict with a Daleker. We could do a little bit of like the keep if we wanted to take the adventure generator idea of the keep, like an old castle. That's or an old keep that actually the the orcs used to trap something to trap a Dalek. 
but I don't know if a castle, we might, might again, we might try rolling again. We'll, we'll keep castle and we'll keep it in hand, but maybe we'll try something else. Dakani fortress abandoned during the war. Did the Dakani, I don't know that the Dakani spent much time in the marches. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of Dakani stuff here. It's mostly the Orc and Daleker stuff. It could be a Daleker castle. Like what if it's an old Daleker, a haunted Daleker castle? Like what would the castle look like if it was formed by um, the, you know, what if it's castle madness, you know, or a giant, yeah, like the castle is a huge skull of something. I don't know. That could be pretty interesting. A Daleker, a Daleker castle. Where does it take place? We could say a castle. For funsies, let's roll again too. I guess I can get rid of that. And just see if there's anything else that comes up with locations that might really grab us. A dark academy. Uh, so again, what if we had like a keep, a Daleker keep? I assume it's Daleker. I'm calling it Daleker. However you want to pronounce it, is, you go with the god. So a Daleker keep could be cool. I don't know how to spell Daleker, so I'm going to go copy and paste it. And then Orc Academy, like a gatekeeper, a gatekeeper academy. So that could be kind of interesting. Well, let's hang on to that. Like the Daleker Keep and Gatekeeper Academy is kind of interesting. Uh, they need to awaken something. So we know that one of the places they're going to have to awaken will probably be a gateway. I, you know, if I'm hanging on to this idea, and I kind of dig it, of open up a gateway, right? That there needs to, that the, that, that House the Rask wants the characters to open up a gateway somewhere. So I think one of the locations is definitely going to be like an old, an, an old gateway, right? That sounds, that's, that sounds like it works. And, and would there be a gateway that the, that the gatekeepers used and they want to open it, the, the, the house, the Rask wants to open it again, but they want to open it to a different, you know, to a different realm for fun and profit. Could it, could it go across to a different place? Like where, where would it connect to might be kind of fun. And is anybody else trying to open it as well? That could be kind of neat. And maybe their, maybe their job is just to find it, you know? Well, and they have to awaken it too, right? The whole, the whole point was to awake. So that's not, you know, that's not bad. Is there any other, let's see if there's any other tables here that are, that, that I need for like flavoring things out, but I, I don't think so. Some of these are going to help fill in the details when we get to an actual location. But story-wise, and are there any tables that help us? We could we could kind of grab some stuff from the Raider, the Raiders of the Lost Ark one, and say that somebody else might be going after it too, just to complicate things a little bit, right? So who guards? Let's see. We, we could say like who. So in this case, like of the artifact, right? The art there, there is no artifact in this one. The artifact is a gateway. But we could say like who protects who protects the gateway. And we roll on that, we get 17. There's a protective celestials. That's kind of interesting. So let's let's say who protects. What did I say? Protective celestials? Protective celestials. That could be orcs, right? Those could be like orc spirit type things that are protecting it. Like Asimar orcs. Sure. Why not? Protective Asimar orcs protect the gateway but then what do you do with them you really want to kill these guys you know i don't know i don't want the characters to do evil stuff and then is there somebody else that's going after this as well somebody else that's trying to get to connect to this gateway and we have sinister elves a group of sinister elves what are those like elf assassin that elf assassin group are maybe they're trying to get a hold of it so who else yeah, is it House Therani or House Therani the Assassin Elves? I've used them before. The Death Guard of Aranal. Ooh, tell me about the Death Guard of Aranal. Let me look that up. That sounds pretty cool. The Death Guard. Elite order of elven priests and warriors from Aranal is sworn to destroy all evil and dead. Well, they're they're kind of good people, aren't they? I don't know if I wanna I don't know if I want good people to but pro elf good. Yeah, still that's kinda that's who is, who's the other house the assassin house is that house therani where the dragon marked mark of shadow was it falarn right blood of vol was half elf half dragon okay maybe so so you know blood of vol might be pretty good i haven't I've, i never really brought the blood of vol into my other eberron campaign so i think that that's a good one that there's a group of blood of vol who are going there as well that's a really good idea i dig that 
Is there a fantastic environment that surrounds the location? What's going on around it that's really bad? 18, falling rocks. Man, eh, it's a little boring. I don't know about, you know, falling. Uh, I don't know. We, let's, let's hang on to that for a minute. Could there be an area where like asteroids are continually hitting or earth motes? I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna try something else. Eternal darkness. I've done an endless night already. So I don't know that I wanna do that. Falling rocks is kind of interesting. I might, I might go back to the falling rocks. We'll, we'll try to get two. A relentless storm. So what about bo like bolides, like small meteors, right? Small meteors hammering the ground. There could be a dragon shard meteor shower, right? Rocks falling up is kind of interesting. Floating citadel disintegrating above. Interesting. So that's pretty cool. All right. So I think the main, so what's the, if, you know, if we're doing like the one sentence, the one sentence, the one sentence description of what this adventure is going to be. Pride, the tiefling handler of House Therani, or Therask. I can never spell it. Whatever. Pride, the tiefling handler of House Therask conscripts, conscripts, hires, I guess we'll go with hires characters to travel into this the marshes what, what's this what, what what what's this location called again uh, i forget the shadow marches to castle what so we can either do a castle or a keep i think we might do a keep but it's a daleker is it a daleker keep that a gate has been built in or is it an orc keep that surrounds a daleker ruin castle madness i don't know about castle madness We'll do that as a place. So it's a castle madness to what? To open the gate. So what do we have? We had to kill someone and awaken something. And we thought that like, you know, to or open an orc gatekeeper gateway. And perhaps pride. Where else? Oh, so what if we tied it to Cubara, right? We had the whole thing about Cubara. That was going to be the other place, right? Wormwatch in Cubara. And I believe wasn't uh, House Therask also operating there? So the two locations could be, you know, hours away instead of weeks or months. And I think that Pride has an object that he says if he, if, or, you know, let's see, is Pride a, what, what, what gender is Pride? Pride, she. So she has an object that she can give to the character and say, you bring this to the gateway and you conduct this ritual and it will open up the gateway and it will connect the gateway to... Cubara to worm watching Cubara. We got the, the this item is connected that we already have the gateway and we've already connected it in on Cubara's side. We need you to do it here, right? And and we and you need to go and do it. I, I think that could be kind of interesting. And then the characters might learn some options. So we, we when we get to our secrets here, we can figure that out. So yeah, so I think we've got like a loose arc at this point, right? We kind of got we kind of got something that we're working on here. So do we have a group patron? Yes, our group patron here will be Pride of House the Rask is the group patron. So the question for the characters is how are you connected to House the Rask and Pride the Tiefling, All right? Excellent, so we have a strong start. So we're gonna start in the, what's that place called? Zarakish, that's the location and a real good like in media res, like what if they're at the tail end of their of another adventure, right? Like they're just about to complete this other adventure. This is your Raiders of the Lost Ark. Go find the idol, right? But the it turns out the idol is what's needed to open the gate. We could start off with Blood of Vol. Let's look up what what do the Blood of Vol do? My wife's gonna yell at me too because she's like another cult. Uh, spark of divinity within our blood and our spirit, find the power within. Death is the end. Delora is oblivion. And if the gods exist, they are cruel. Stand with it because they associate with necromancy and that dead. Many people believe but of all embraces death and that the followers wish that neither things are true. The seekers of the divinity within. They don't revere undead. They believe that once someone has died, you might as well put the corpse to use. So they are undead types. So let's have a, we will start in a different location. We'll go back to our location generator. Let's see, go back to the top here. Maybe it's happening in the town. So I have that, my, my little city generator. We'll go here. And we have like, there's notable landmarks. We can, we can or there's an adventure locations, right? So let's take a look at the adventure locations we have here. We have 12. An old tomb, that makes sense. So in an old tomb inside, and what kind of tomb would it be? Would it be for orcs? Uh, would it be a human tomb? 
so let's see. In an old tomb, the characters face off against a blood of Vol fanatic and her undead servants. So that's pretty cool. It's an old tomb. Let's see if we can find an interesting characteristic of this tomb. There's the notable landmarks in the city generator, but I think there's a monument. We have monuments in here. Yeah, monuments. So let's, what's a, a cool monument in the center of this tomb is to an obelisk, right? Surrounding an obelisk, a floating ruined obelisk. Now, what kind of cool undead? So uh, for this battle, we have a cult fanatic. We probably have a handful of cultists, maybe two other cultists. And then some undead, would they be skeletons? Skeletons are always, I mean, they're pretty straightforward, but they're a little bit boring. Is there any other kind of interesting undead that, the, that these guys would sort of animate and use? They could have a big like ogre zombie that works for them. That's not bad. How about one ogre zombie? And probably six skeletons, eight skeletons. I don't think it's gonna be Bodax because Bodax, first of all, you, a cult fanatic doesn't command Bodax, but I think this is pretty good. So now what we have to do is, is that deadly? I'm going to have four to five third level. I, I already know the answer. The answer is yes, yeah, probably deadly. Four to five, but really the only things that are really bad in this are the ogre zombie. Let's see. The ogre zombie is a CR two, the cult fanatic is a CR2, so that's four, all right, whoops. Eight skeletons is two total, so that's six. And the two cultists are another half, we'll round down. So it's about six. And the Deadly Encounter bar benchmark tells us that if we have four characters of third level, the CR, the, the, the Deadly limit is three. So this is definitely on the deadly side. So we'll probably, just to lower the action economy a little bit, probably knock it down to four skeletons. I mean, skeletons aren't particularly dangerous. And, and you're not really changing the CR, right? Because it's like an ogre zombie and a cult fanatic alone are, are higher than a deadly encounter, according to my deadly encounter benchmark. But I don't think they're really that bad. And, and you know, you might not play them like totally optimally either. Cultists are really... Not much, but it's a lot of action on their side, right? That's four, eight actions against four potential characters. So we could start in media res and have a bunch of skeletons already destroyed. And there's only like, you know, and maybe what's one cultist. So we still have a cult fanatic, one cultist, an ogre zombie that's wounded. And because we're starting in the middle of a battle, right? I think that'd be cool. And I, I can always crank on the dials. Thank you, Sadia, one, three, four. You know my, you know my shit. Thank you. Yeah, so that's a good strong start, right? They're, they're in an old tomb. In the center of the tomb is a floating obelisk. Maybe instead of the floating obelisk is the floating, you know, maybe this is where they're probably drawing power out of the obelisk and they have this item, right? And what's the item? The item is a 15, a glove, a weird glove, Michael Jackson glove. It is a, a human 16 a windswept glove. I don't know about that. I'm not sure about a glove. Let's try something else. Uh, 14 is a tiara. That could be cool. A sort of a weird, and then instead of human, we'll make it an orcish tiara, right? An orcish headdress. Uh, what is that called? Like, it's, it's not really a tiara, it's sort of a headband. It was like a headband of intellect. That may be kind of neat. So like a circlet, right? I, I kind of like the idea of giving a magic item like right off the bat, like right off the bat, except that they will all have a magic item, but I still think it could be cool. Is there another circlet beyond a headband of intellect? Like what's the other, let's see, let's take a look at another headband. There's that headband of intellect. What's the circlet that shoots, circlet of blasting? Is that the one that casts a, uh, so that one might be kind of cool. And they're really only gonna get to use it once. So maybe we'll do a circlet of blasting instead. And that's a, and it's an orcish, right? An orc of the orc of the gatekeepers. And it's used to open the gateway. It can, it can it, you know, sort of fires its beams or something and opens up the gateway. We'll go with that, sure, why not? So what are the scenes of this adventure going to be? So we're gonna have the defeating the blood of Vol fanatic and recovering the circlet. Good James Bond, you know, good James Bond moment. 
the job, pride, conscripts the characters to go into the shadow marches and to Castle Madness and use the circlet to open a gateway to Cubara. Should be a totally easy job. Nobody's going to be there. Along the journey, something might happen. So we can have sort of a scene along the way. And for this one, we're going to go to my wilderness exploration generator here. And we're going to have, so we have wilderness, we have a swamp. So actually we're going to, we're going to use my environmental location and we're going to go into the swamp area and we're going to roll to see like what kind of swamp place will they run into along the way? I rolled an eight An eight is a submerged, submerged corpses. So this is right out of your Lord of the Rings, right? Along the journey, find submerged corpses. And who would they be of? Oh, Daleker, right? A weird, twisted Daleker and orcs. That's pretty good. I'm going to roll again on that one because it might, it might bring up something. A flaming effigy in the center, right? So sometimes you can stack these tables. You can roll a couple of times and, and build deeper locations around a flaming effigy. Wicker Man Lovecraft shit, exactly. So that's cool. So they find that along their journey. Then they get to the keep, uh, they crawl it, find the gate and open it and, and use the circuit and use the circlet. And then they step through into Kibara. And maybe there's another group of adventurers on the other side that have opened the gate on the other side. So we'll see. So now we need, so what I'm gonna do is jump now to the locations and grab a map because we really need a map for this place. So what's, what's ca I'm still calling it Castle Madness. I don't know, that name may change. I'm not crazy about it, but it'll go for now. So now what I like to do is go to my, my Dyson logo, DysonLogo.com or DysonLogo.blog slash maps because it's got a thousand maps. I think literally a thousand maps. Castle stress. <laughs> Castle reality, the, the, the border of reality. I don't know. And so I need something that's sort of like a castle or a keep. This one, you know, right off the bat, this one looks kind of cool. And you grab the first map that, you know, the first map that really works. So what if Citadel on the Edge of Forever? Something about like the, the, the Castle Nightmare. Eh, castle, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, it couldn't be more like Castle Grayskull. But Castle Nightmare is not bad. Except the, the Daleker is not really about nightmares, right? Because there's a whole other place for that. Castle Ab Castle Aberrant, pretty pretty descriptive of what is, what's going on. But I really like this map right off the bat, right? I like the idea that like there's no central entrance. And look at this, there's a gate right there, right? Let's see, these stairs go up. I'm confused. One goes up, one goes down. So this these steps, let's see, you go down and they go in here. And th so the gate would be below. And you could go up here and go up and maybe the gate, you know, kind of an upper terrace above the gate. So that could work. So I, you know, what I love is like, you just grab one and you're ready to go, right? Like I, I looked at like three maps and I already like a map. So I dig this map. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to, Castle Madness now has a map, right? And you go bang and off it goes to this map. Very cool. We're not done with the fantastic locations, but we're, we're further along. So now secrets and clues. So I need a bunch of, so, you know, I want to do my 10 secrets and clues. And what are some of the secrets and clues? The orcs, the gatekeeper orcs battled the twisted aberrance of the gate of the Daleker here in sh the shadow marches. The orcs built a keep around a gateway that they used to do what? to travel across the lands. You can type exclamation mark notion and it will give you all sorts of information about notion, by the way. So they orcs built a keeper on a gateway that they used to travel across the lands to battle, to, to, to quickly. Oh, they used a keep around old Daleker gateways, right? So the idea is like they're like the, what did the gatekeepers do? The gate, so rifts were opening up that were bringing the Daleker in and they figured out how to use them back. So some orcs felt that using the gateways brought great danger to the land. Others found them too useful to not activate. 
That's a good secret. What other what other interesting secrets do we have going on about the gatekeeper orcs? Gatekeep, some gatekeeper orcs have celestial blood and still protect the gates. The blood of Vol hopes to use the gates to transfer armies of undead across Corvair. Let's see. There's a Lady Vol, isn't there? It says, I thought there was a Lady Vol. Let's learn more about the blood of, blood of Vol, right? So I'm going to steal a couple of these ideas here. So some of these, a lot of times you can steal secrets right out of the text and drop them in. One, two, three, five, six, seven, right? And that's great. The secrets of Vol, yeah, they often get confused with Emerald Claw, but they're not really... So I think, yeah, that's probably enough on the Blood of Vault. So what about the Gatekeepers? Let's take a look at Gatekeepers. Uh, gatekeepers are one of the oldest sects primarily founded among the Orcs of the Shadow Marches. They act to protect Eberron from aberrations and other unnatural creatures and seek to prevent extraplanar incursions and attacks. The Gatekeepers maintain ancient seals that hold long-forgotten evil at bay. The Gatekeepers worry that using the gates weakens the bonds that hold back the aberrants. So a fun ending of this adventure might be they get to the gate, they have the object, but they've talked to the orcs and the orcs are basically saying, you don't want to activate it. You know, it's not worth it. We, we tried and, and we lost. And then the, the players can decide, do we want to open it or not? It's kind of a fun final, fun final thing. So I got my locations. One of the things that I can do is, I've got this huge map, is we want to fill out the locations with some interesting places. And so I've got these monuments that I can use to fill in certain chambers. So I'm gonna just grab a few of these monuments. I'm gonna roll randomly for a few. And that can fill in some of the chambers. That can fill in some of the details of the chambers as they're exploring. And so the monuments, a couple of them are five and 16, a monstrous skull and a summoning circle. Right. Those are cool. Let's grab a couple others, two and six. Two is an obelisk and six is a megalith. Right, these are cool, cool things. Anything else? You know, I'm not gonna fill in every single room. I'll just grab a couple more. 20 and 11. 11 is a statue and 20 is a fountain. So I have an NPC and I'll probably need an orc NPC, right? We probably, they'll probably run into a gatekeeper orc. So, oh, so let's jump to the other one. My, my uncovered secrets one. I need some names, right? So we're gonna go with Orvist Dawnborn. See, that's a good one. And then I need another name. Let's go to our thing here. I like Night Chaser a lot. Agtos Night Chaser is a blood of all priest seeking to open the gate. Who is the one they're fighting? They're fighting one right in the beginning. That one is Brela. So Brela Night Chaser, sister of Agtos and necromancer of Vol. Right? Is there anybody else they might run into? Any other NPC? Why don't we just roll randomly and see? So we will go with just, we'll roll right on the origin table. 17. An aberrant. Well, we already know about aberrants. We can place it full of aberrants. Three is a dwarf. There's a dwarf and they are, oh, we can go to, we can go back to a behavior. What kind of dwarf are they? 12. Well, I can't do a 12 because it's only D10. One. An enthusiastic dwarf. And I need a good dwarf name. We'll go with Dolly Mountain Storm, an enthusiastic dwarf explorer who they might run into in the, in the location, like while they're actually there. So I've got a stack of NPCs. So now what kind of monsters make sense for here? So aberrants make sense. So we have gibbering mouthers. We have blood of vol, undead, cultists, and fanatics. I guess it's just undead and cultists, right? And mercenaries. I want to put a behold. I want a, I want a low level beholder. That's all they do. What are some of the, I guess we'll go to monsters. I'm trying to remember what's, what, what's like a, I need a, I need a, a, a beholder that is of the CR three to five. Yeah. So there's gazers and spectators. I think gazers are the weaker ones, right? Yeah. They're only CR one half, uh, but a spectator, that might be better. Spectator is CR three. So I think a spectator would be pretty good. So we'll do a, a spectator because it's a Daleker place and they've got they've got stuff like that. Any other really fun aberrants? Let's do a, we'll go to the monsters. Dude, this is taking longer than an hour. 
uh, monsters, and we will go to aberration, and we will do a CR. I'm not doing flumps. Neogi, a Neogi would be pretty cool. Neogi are really smart, right? Aren't they like, how do you spell them? N-E-O-G-I. Nothics aren't bad, but I think I'm, I'm going to have to be using Nothics. So Neo, yeah, Neogi are really cool. Slave, like, like what if they're a Dalek or Slaver? I like that. We're going to put some, and they're, they're the right, Neogi are the right challenge rating. So that's pretty cool. I kind of want, I don't want to, there's, there's a lot of, let's see, we're going to advance filters and I'm going to do source and we're going to do monster manual and we're going to do Volo's guide and we're going to do Morden Canons and we'll do Van Richten's just in case because there's some pretty good monsters in Van Richten's filter. We'll do the CR again. And Jibbering Mouthers, we got Intellect of Hours, are scary. Nothic, Grells. I've already done a Grell. Neogis are cool. Spectator's cool. A Neogi Master. That would be pretty that would be pretty good. Yeah, I think I like the Neogi Master. Whoops, wrong one. Oh. Mind witness. Ooh, a mind witness. That might be better than a Yeah, a mind a mind witness is even better than a spectator. I think I've run them before. They stun. Yug slods. Not running slods. Star spawn mangler. Gouth. What is a gouth? Is a gouth another beholder like creature? So maybe I run a gouth instead of a mind witness. And then we're hitting CRs that are too high. Are there any really low? So Neogi hatchlings are kind of low. Uh, so, and gazers, except that kind of blows the. Oh, it looks like my filter stopped. What is it? Burbalang. Burbalangs might be kind of neat. So I've got kind of a. A good mix of weird monsters, I think. I'm all set there. Treasure, I've got that circlet. I could throw some relics in here. So once again, we'll go to the core adventure generator. We will roll a couple of d20s for the item. We've got nine is a cup and four is a spike. That's kind of cool. And let's do some conditions on these. We have six and four. Three, six is a poison, like a poisonous spike. That would be pretty cool for, uh, a poisonous spike would be pretty cool. And I like to put a spell on there. Now, uh, these guys don't have a list of spells, but the Lazy DM's workbook does. So we're gonna grab the Lazy DM workbook here, and we're gonna grab a, we're gonna grab a spell effect. I didn't wanna replicate stuff that's in the workbook, which is why it doesn't have it. So we roll a D100, 36. 36 is true strike, boar. Not gonna do true strike. That's 56, that could be more interesting. Acid arrow, <laughs> makes perfect sense. So poisonous spike that casts acid arrow once. So that works out really well. I'm slouching in my chair. So. I've got the steps, right? I've got my strong start. I've got connections to the characters. Yeah, cup that casts Heroes Feast. No. I've got scenes that are going on here. I've got my secrets and clues. I've got a map. Uh, I've got some places that are gonna fill the map. I have my NPC, some a handful of NPCs, monsters and treasure. Am I done? Probably not. I could, you know, I think what I would do next is I would actually take this map that I put in here and I'd annotate it. I'd, I'd put like, what are some locations in here? I try to fill these rooms up with just one word descriptions of what's in there. I could actually print it out and, and do it with a Sharpie, but I actually have an annotation plugin where, where I can quickly like, I think, is this guy it? I have Zoho, Zoho annotator. And if I take it in here, I can just put text and I can drop it and I can say, you know, I can I can drop my text right over the map. You know, I can do black because right, and that way I can label my map very quickly with like what's where. You know, I can I can put uh, text here and say the gate, right, and that way I have an idea of like what's in each room, and then I can change up like what kind of monsters they they face. You know, so. Yeah, so I think that that can work. I think that can, that can work pretty well. I'm not going to do all of that right now because we're already almost an hour and a half in, but that's probably what I'm going to do next to finish this off.
But after that, I think I'm I think I'm okay. I think there's a little I probably will spend more time reading about the Shadow Marches because I just skimmed it very, very quickly. I'll probably read more about the gatekeepers. I'll probably read more about the blood of Vol. Kind of like absorb some lore. And once I have that lore kind of in there, I can probably fill this out more. But really, I've got a good deal of stuff here pretty well set. And and I like the way that the adventure builder helped me kind of, you know, fill in interesting pieces of this. So I think we're going to call it a day there. So I hope it gave you an idea of like how you can use adventure generators to sort of fire your mind up. Obviously, you have sort of stock material that you use, like like the lore from Eberron. But yeah, mixing and mixing your own ideas with random tables and then lots of lore and you throw this into a big soup. I didn't have anything when I started this, right? Throw it all into a big soup and you stir it around and you roll dice and you write, jot down ideas and you can you can kind of see how it ends up turning into so I want to thank everybody for coming today. I appreciate the folks that are hanging out in Twitch. If you enjoyed this show and you want to help me out, you can do so by subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter and you'll get articles in your inbox every week. You can subscribe on YouTube and get new videos. Probably, I think it's about four times a week these days. Four to five times a week is a new video. I do a lot of videos these days. You can support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish, which gives you access to all of the adventure generators and uncovered secrets that I just showed, as well as access to previews of videos. And I do a monthly newsletter there, but most of all, you're helping support the show, the equipment, the bandwidth, the costs, all of the associated costs that uh, it takes to put stuff like this together. Patron helps pay for that. And fourth, if you haven't, you can pick up my books, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master and the Lazy DMs Workbook, and keep an eye out later this year for the Kickstarter for the Lazy DMs Companion, which is gonna have all these random tables to help you generate your adventures. So I wanna thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a great day and uh, get out there and play some D&D. Thank you very much.